Hello YouTube friends, this is Dennis, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a web scraping for indie jobs, this time using zero work. I don't know if you've seen my video regarding web scraping indie jobs, but last time I used AP5 for it inside Active Pieces. So this time I want to do something different with a different type of automation using zero work. And we're going to be leveraging Active Pieces to determine whether we uh, qualify for that job and it meets the salary requirements. So we're going to be uh, using zero work in conjunction with active pieces. And lastly, we're going to be storing the information to AI table.ai. We're going to be using the webhook feature from active pieces, and we're going to be sending a response back and we're going to be continuing the automation back in zero work. And we're going to be marking the job as favorite. So if it satisfies the requirement. So let me go ahead and quickly demonstrate what we're going to build today. So we have zero work here. I'm going to be pulling up. So this is going to be the task bot that I built for this demo. So you can see here from top to bottom what we're going to be building today. And then on the activist side, this is the actual flow that we're going to be using for this demonstration today. I'm going to be showing you guys and tell you guys in details in a little bit what this automation is going to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at it from a user's perspective when we're searching for a job. So essentially when you go to any job, you log in and then you, you type in your search here and then your location, and then you hit search. When you hit search, you're given this unique uh, URL here for the specific query. And this could be for multiple queries, right? So you could be searching for a this position and then you could be searching for another position right so this automation is going to scale based on those two criteria we want to be able to search for multiple type of queries it could be based on the job title or location or it could be a little bit of both the different combination so essentially we're going to be scraping the job titles here the company information the location and then we're going to be grabbing the description as well and then the compensation. So we're going to be grabbing the compensation for this. Some of them doesn't have a compensation information. And then lastly, we're going to be marking it as bookmark. So we're going to be using and leveraging AI to determine whether the job description or the job itself fits or within the range of skill sets that we, we have in our experience. And also we're going to be determining whether the salary requirement fits our requirement. So we're going to be going over that today let's go back to board mix real quick so this is what we're building today so on a high level we're going to be kicking off the automation from zero work and then we're going to be looping through all the jobs within that page within each page within the search results and then we're going to be sending uh, a request to active pieces which then we're going to make a request to ai and get back the results whether we qualify for that job or the job requirements is within our requirement all right, so once we determine the job qualifications and the requirements, we're gonna go ahead and send back to Zero Work, which is gonna be doing additional automation for that particular job posting. That's what we're gonna be building in this video. If you like this type of video, please consider subscribing to my channel and let's get to it. I'd just like to quickly mention the new community I'm gonna be launching pretty soon. Depending on when you watch this video, I'm gonna have a waiting list a form that you can sign up for at the bottom next to the description of this video or it's gonna have the URL to the actual community itself so it's gonna be pretty fun it's gonna be for people who wants to level up their AI automation skills specifically with active pieces zero work etc so it's gonna be a little bit of technical but you don't have to worry about that as this is for anybody regardless of your technical level whether you're new, new to coding or you have some coding experience, I'm going to be catering to everyone. I'm going to be explaining everything in details. So what are you getting from this community is I'm going to have exclusive items. I'm going to have exclusive templates with additional notes. So all the templates that I use in my YouTube videos is going to include additional notes and all the resources is going to be in one location within this community. I'm also going to include two to three 30 minutes live QA sessions per month, which all the members in the community can participate in. They can ask questions regarding my previous build, or they can ask questions regarding stuff that they're working on at the moment. So we're going to have that in the community each month. So I'm going to be publishing some exclusive tutorials that's only going to be uh, published within the community itself. Everything that I publish on YouTube is pretty much compressed. 
So you don't really see the behind the scenes. You don't really see the things that happens, the research that happens beforehand when I'm building an automation. With the tutorials within the community, it's going to have a lot more details and you're going to see everything from the thought process to building out the different blocks of the automation. So that's going to be included as part of it. So things that you don't see uh, behind the scenes is going to be part of these tutorials. So the price is locked in for life as long as you stay as a member. What that means is whatever you sign up for right now, you're going to be grandfathered for life as long as you stay as a member. And the price might increase in the future just depending on how many members we get. Uh, so if you're thinking about signing up for this community, I recommend that you sign up as soon as possible so you can, you can lock in into the actual lower price and you're going to be locked in for that price for life. Uh, one thing that I also want to introduce as part of the community is uh, in, in addition to the live QA sessions is you're also going to get feedback from me on your automations and projects. So hopefully we can get a community going where people are active and they're helping out each other within the community itself. And lastly, I want to reward people who are top contributing members of the community. So if you're active in the community, you're providing good feedback, are you helping out with the community members? You're going to be climbing up in the leaderboard and that's pretty much going to allow you to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me where we can walk through the different projects that you're working on. We can ask some questions. So yeah, that's going to be what the new community is going to be about. And I hope to see you there. All right. So before we dive deep into how this automation was built, I just want to go ahead and run this so you can see the automation run from start to finish and see what's happening. It's going to go ahead and navigate to these two URLs here. So if you go to one of these URLs, each of these URLs have a specific search criteria and the location. Same thing with the second one. If you go to it and click. So that we're, we're going to be navigating to two search results and we're going to be scraping the job results here. And then we're going to be doing some additional processing in the background and sending this data to active pieces. And then we're going to go and if you go back to Indeed right here, it's going to go to my jobs and you can see here, I already have three bookmarks here. Let's go ahead and check this one. So it's not bookmarked anymore. So you can see here, I don't have any more jobs that I have bookmarked. So let's, let's go ahead and run this real quick. All right. It's going to launch and navigate to those two URLs first. And it's just going to scrape the information that it needs, such as the URL the job title and the location and the company. And then it's going to go and navigate to each job posting URL where it's going to be sending uh, the job description and the compensation to active pieces. And then it's going to be determining whether it's something that we need to bookmark. All right. So you see here, there's a bookmark uh, icon right here and it should turn to saved. So it's doing the bookmarking for us as well as part of this automation. So we don't have to do anything. Let's go ahead and wait it's still a finish. So right now it's scraping the, the description here and it's also scraping the compensation information on this page if it does find it. And then it's sending that information to active pieces where active pieces then takes that result and, and send it to AI for further processing. And then we're sending back the result to zero work to do the additional automation on our behalf. All right, this should be the last one, I believe, since we're only going to be processing four jobs here. All right, so that terminates the whole automation flow here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the results. You can see here that it was able to grab four job postings. It was able to grab the description. It grabbed the URL to the job posting itself, the location, the salary. You'll notice here that some of the job posting doesn't have salary information. We're actually saving the salary information if, if it does exist. And then let's go back to AA table quick. You see here the same result that we got from zero work is also saved here. In addition to that, we're also generating the cover letter. One thing that you notice here is the cover letter is only for this one result here, which is the senior principal software engineer, the, the first one right here. The reason for that is I we added a little bit of validation here. Make sure that this particular job posting meets our skill set requirements. So it has to have a 60% match. And I'm going to be showing you guys all that process inside ActivePixis. So it's only creating a cover letter for it if it does match based on the, the description and our skill set. Those two has to match. All right. So let's go back to zero work here and continue with the actual details of how this task bot was built.
So first of all, create a taskbot here with this name. So make sure that it's I'm logged in. So this is the state that we are going to be doing a web scraping for. As you know already, the logged in and logged out state is going to be different. Some websites have totally different so CSS selectors depending on where, whether you're logged in or not. All right. So if you go to in the jobs, we can go ahead and copy the cookie information by doing an export here using edit this cookie extension and then doing an export here. And then this is going to copy the cookies information into the clipboard, which we can do, go ahead and go to the settings of the taskbot and paste it down here where the cookies information is. So after we set that, we can go ahead and save it. And then we'll make sure that every time we run this taskbot, we're going to be logged in. So it's going to be acting on our behalf as a logged in user. So let's drill down to the details of this taskbot, right? You can see here from top to bottom, the whole automation. And I did color coordinated it. So we can clearly identify each section of the automation here. So we can distinguish each one. The first thing that we do is initially, you notice here when I go to the data table, you notice here that job results stays where it's at. It's not being wiped out. And the reason why I do that is because so I can inspect it at the end of the run so I can see what happened and see what information was scraped and so on and so forth. And then at the beginning of each run, and that's when I delete the data. So a block here for deleted data, and this is going to delete all the records for this in the jobs. All right. So before we jump into the actual uh, flow of the taskbot, let's go ahead and look at the two tables here. I previously mentioned the URLs, which holds the individual search results. So each of these URL holds the individual queries. If you're looking for jobs with different job titles or different location, you're scouting for different locations, this is going to scale for that particular scenario. So you can add as many uh, URLs that you want here if you're looking for different job positions and so on and so forth. And the second data table here holds the actual Indeed Jobs information, such as the title, description, URL, company, location, salary, and then there's this special column here. It's called Mark Favorite. And it's specifically, it's named as Mark Favorite with a camel casing. So there's a reason for this, and I'm going to be explaining to you guys in a little bit why that's the case. You see here that it's set to true. So this is going to be coming back from active pieces. We're going to be setting it uh, from active pieces. We're going to be doing a, a synchronous call to active pieces webhook and active pieces is going to send back either a true or a false based on where it lands on the branch in the active pieces automation. So which we're going to be going through in a little bit, just to mention it briefly. So after it deletes the data, it's going to go ahead and I'll go to this first loop right here and you know, do a start repeat on this start repeat. We're doing a dynamic here because we're going to be navigating and doing a loop across all the different URLs inside this table over here. Then it's going to go ahead and open each link. And this one is dynamically set to point and reference that URL in that data table, which is right here. So if you don't know how to reference dynamic table, you can go ahead and click on this copy table reference right here. And then it's going to look for the tables that we want to reference. And then we're going to go ahead and click on that column and hit save. It will go to a URL and then it's going to do an inner loop uh, within the first loop. So it's going to go ahead and do a start repeat here. And it's going to, after it went ahead and go to that first link, it's going to go ahead and do a standard uh, loop type here where we can set uh, what type of uh, CS selector we want to uh, do a loop on or repeat. So we selected this td.result content, which is a td element with a, with a class of result content. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So if you go and inspect anywhere on this page, go to the, the right where the HTML is, let's go ahead and do a control F and then paste that CSS selector. Uh, you can see here on the right hand side, you can see here that there's one to 15 results. So you can see here that we're getting 15 results out of that selector. Click on the search next. It's going to go and go to the next result here and go to the next one and so on and so forth. Software engineer here and then delete software engineer and so on and so forth. 
So this CSS selector just determines how many times we we're going to be doing a repeat on this page. Okay. And we use this CSS selector for that. Going back to zero work here. And then you can optionally add a repetition count here. If you want to limit how many counts do you want to do. So since we gathered 15, if you just want to reduce that. So I've chosen to reduce it to two just to keep things moving and keep the task duration short. So that's why I put, I put two, but you can remove this if you want to. All right. So after that, it's going to go through each of the result that was found. So now we're going to grab the, the job title. So I'm using this TD dot result con content, which we're using from the previous step. And then underneath that, there's an H2 with a class of job title. So let's go ahead and copy this one. So just make sure that it matches the 15 result that we got. So let's go ahead and replace this one with the selector. As you can see here, we're getting 15 as well. If you do a search next, it's going through and grabbing the, uh, the job title information. Let's go into the next one. So the 15 is our number right now. This is the target that we're aiming for. We want to make sure that every time we build our selector, we want to make sure that we're always getting 15 because that's the result that we need to get. Let's go back to the page and after the selector, I'm adding this double greater than and then nth equals the loop index, which essentially assigns this index within this part of the loop. It's going to grab that specific index. And with this selector, we're going to grab the content or the text for that element. So we're saving it as text and there's different options here as well. If you want to use a different uh, type of attribute, you can use that. But text is what we want and we're saving it to the indeed jobs and then specifically to this title column. Okay. And then hit save. The next one, we're saving the job URL, similar to the previous one underneath that H2 tag directly underneath it. There's a, it's an A element here. And then we're just assigning this special syntax here to get it at that specific loop index. And then instead of a text where it shows the link or the href. So we're going to be grabbing the href or the link of that A tag. So go back here, do control F. So you can see here that it went straight to where the job title is, which is underneath that H2. And then we're going to just grab the URL here and see here. Since we're going to be extracting the description and compensation information from that URL later on after the repeat has completed. So you can see here, there's also 15 result here and it's going to the job title directly. So we're saving the link and we're saving that to that data table and this column here for the URL. After that, we're going to be saving the company information. So this is a bit more involved as it has to go through and select the end child uh, within a div that has a class of company underscore location. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one and copy it and take a look. The control F you see here that so within this element right here with a class of company under core location directly underneath that there's a child of div and directly underneath that the nth child directly with an element of div and below that directly is there's a span with a the data dash test ID equals the company dash name. So this is a great CSS selector to use having work with automation engineers in the past, they would specifically assign these custom attributes to the elements just so that they can do their automation tests. So they can specifically look for the company name information and perform their automation based on these different custom attributes here. So when you see something like this, where it that has this data dash test ID equals to whatever, you can safely assume this is going to be a safe attribute or CSS selector to use because this is probably something that they're using internally when they're doing their automation testing. So just a little tip there when you're selecting your CSS selector. All right, let's go back to zero work and we're selecting the text and we're saving that into the company column. And then lastly, for the second repeat here, we're saving the text location here. Same type of format, except it's much simpler because now we're just grabbing the text or the test ID with the text dash location. And same format as before, it, we're grabbing the attribute of data dash test ID with a test location. 
So this is probably something that they're using internally. So we can take advantage of that and just grab that selector and use that for our benefit. So we're going to save it as text and then we're going to be saving it inside location. So now at this point in this automation, we already saved the title, the URL, the company and the location. The only thing that we're missing at this point is the description and the salary, right? After this first repeat, we're going to be going through and filling out the, the blanks and adding the description and the salary information. So going up here after the first loop, right? Not the second loop after the first loop has completed. So after the first loop and the second loop, since the second loop is part of the first loop has completed, we're going to go ahead and add a, another repeat here. Uh, we add this after repeat, uh, which is attached to this start repeat on the first loop. So after the first loop has completed, it's run through all the search queries, URLs, uh, it's going to do another repeat here. And which we're then we're going to be adding this third loop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third loop. So it, it does a start repeat here. And this time we're setting it to dynamic and we're setting it to the select uh, table here. So once we've um, added the the different records. So in our case, we've scraped four uh, job positions so far, and we've stored it in these jobs uh, data table. So now the responsibility of this repeat is we're going to go through each of those search results and we're just going to go in and fill in the blanks. So each one is going to be opening up the link and based on the href or the A element uh, link. We're going to grab the URL for each one and we're going to be opening up the link and we're going to be navigating to each of those job positions. One thing that I added here is we're checking for the salary here. If you notice on some of the results here, it doesn't have any salary information such as this one and this one right here. So we're searching, we're looking into whether the job posting has the salary information. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the results here. So this one right here has the salary information. So if you go to like another one, when we go to the second URL, you can see that this one doesn't have any compensation information versus the other one. So we're checking uh, whether uh, the job posting have that information. So while look, working through the tutorials, I noticed that the salary information can be done a little better. So before, I don't know if you notice it, but before it was being set to full time or there's a compensation here. So depending on whether that job a posting had a, a compensation listed for that posting. So I went ahead and changed how the salary is being checked over here. So I went ahead and create this new selector here, which essentially is a modification from the previous one. So before I was just grabbing and I was just checking whether this span of where this salary info and job type ID exists with the span on it. I didn't really take in consideration that it's going to scrape everything underneath that. So I improved it a little bit by adding this additional check here where it's essentially it's checking for this element here with the end child of this, whether it's the only element within that container of salary information and job type. I'm doing a reverse check here where if it's found, that means that there's no salary information. And if it was not found, then there's a the salary information based on the CSS selector here, where there's uh, multiple spans within this ID of salary info and job type. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So if that uh, selector was found and we're going to skip getting the salary, if it was not found, then we're going to grab and save the salary. So like, let's take a look at the, the two examples that we have. So I have two examples here. One is a senior principal software engineer here with no salary information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second one which does have this compensation information here. So if you notice this, if I do a control F here within the HTML element, you can see here that this one didn't find it, right? Meaning that this one have a compensation. And with this one right here, if I do a control F here, you notice that it found one element, which means that the compensation doesn't exist here. So what is it looking for? It ensures that there's only one child element within this particular selector. So if there's multiple ones, that means there's a compensation and there's only one, that means there's no compensation information. So that's the selector that we're using to make sure that there's the salary doesn't exist. So I did a check if salary not exists and then not found, then we're saving that salary information, right? So 
So essentially we're grabbing the same ID and then directly underneath that, there's a, a child element of a span and we're just grabbing the text and saving the salary. So that's gonna be that for how we save the salary information. And then from there, either it was found or not found, it goes and go to the next one, which is the description, which we are always saving. So there's always a description regardless of the job posting that was posted. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So we're using the hashtag job description text and we're grabbing the text and then we're saving it into the description. So it's a very simple one. There's not much going on there. Let's do control find and see here that it's grabbing the entire full job description here at the bottom and it's highlighting it here. So it's always going to be available. So let's go back to zero work. We're doing a custom JavaScript here. We're doing a sanitize on the description and making sure that uh, zero work doesn't draw an exception when we send uh, the description to active pieces when it does the JSON parsing. So I declared a function here that removes any unnecessary characters that will draw off the json.parse function. And then here I declared a variable here called job description that does an await on get ref, which references that ref underscore ID, this 34607 with the name of description. And then if you notice here, all the data tables have a ref ID, which we then grab which data table we want to reference. So that's what we do here. We grab a reference to it, assign the description, job description, and then we call that function and reassign it to the job description and reassign the clean string, right, essentially. And then we set it back to that row and column. And then we save it. Then we, we go ahead and set it to active pieces from here. We declare an HTTP request here. And we're sending the webhook. But keep in mind here that I added a forward slash sync to this URL. So if you're using active pieces webhook functionality, if you're making a synchronous request, you have to just to do a forward slash sync so that it can respond to a request. So that's what it does. And we're just re uh, making a request body here with the HTTP uh, method of post. And then we're sending the title company description uh, URL source, which I added. Now I can specify whether it's Indeed or LinkedIn and the salary information right here. So if you don't know how the dynamic properties work, we can go ahead and clear this. So inside the double quotes here, we have to make sure that we're using a valid JSON object here. And inside the double quotes, we're just gonna go ahead and copy table reference. And we're just gonna select the data table that we want to reference. In this case, we want to reference the salary information. And that's gonna bring in the reference to that. That's gonna bring in that syntax with an ID and the name of salary, all right? The save response here is something that's also new because we're saving the response from active pieces. We're going to be saving it inside of in the jobs data table within the row, right? And then we're specifically sending it to this mark favorite. So if you can remember from earlier, I mentioned the mark favorite column here, which is specifically named as mark favorite with the camel casing, which matches what active pieces is sending back. We have to match it because this is the nesting record path and which matches the property of the JSON body that's going to be sent back from active pieces. All right. So once we send it to active pieces, let's go ahead and, and go over and switch over to the active pieces side. So you can see uh, uh, the actual automation here. So you can see here the actual automation from top to bottom. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one in details. So I renamed this instead of zero work LinkedIn jobs. I renamed this to just zero work jobs since now it's a bit more generic since we can take in any requests from either a LinkedIn or indeed job posting. So now we're going to be taking in the source. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one right here. Expand a little bit and see the incoming requests. You can see here the URL the title salary which is new and then the source is now indeed and then company and description and so now the source can be either linkedin or indeed depending on where the web scraping is taking place so the next step of the process is we're doing a find records here based on the url so we're doing a little bit more of a defensive programming here we want to ensure that all the records within a table is going to be a unique based on the url it's not the best filtering mechanism to use because URL can be off by a character and it will not match. So we can find a better 
alternative to this one, but essentially we want to make sure that all the URLs that we scrape for is going to be unique inside the A tables. So this is basically a step so that we can ensure that the URL is unique within inside a, a AI table. And we're doing a filter here and then we're using the URL to match and do a filtering based on that. And then we're using the data and inside of that, there's a total property here. It's going to be returning how many records it found when we do the query. And then from here, we want to make, make sure that the number is equal to zero. This ensures that the URL is unique and we haven't found that URL within all the records that we have. And then we do have a true or false here. If it's true, and if it's unique, then we're going to fall on the, the true side of the branch, which we're then going to proceed and check and pass the description information to AI. We're going to be passing in the, actually, we're going to be passing in the salary that we received from the incoming request. And then we have this prompt right here where we are job market analysts. And essentially it's going to determine whether the salary information fits our salary requirement, right? So if we're looking for a hundred thousand or whatever amount it is, you can put it here and then it's just going to check. So we can just change this to however you want. And then AI can decide based on the description that was found, whether it's, you know, true or false, this is going to return a true or false here. And then it gives you this output, which we can then uh, add a branch here. We can check based on the output from step four here, whether it fits our salary requirement, whether the text contains a true, in which case it's going to go ahead and continue the automation. Otherwise it's going to go to false and it's going to go on all the way to the bottom. So we're just going to go and keep doing these mini branches here until we fall into, you know, whatever case scenario you fall into. If it's true, then we're going to mark it as favorite. So this salary information determines whether we mark that job as favorite when it goes back. This is the result that we're going to be sending back to zero work when it gets called. So we're setting it to true, right? And if it's false, then it goes back down over here and it pulls it and it's going to be pulling the same storage key with the favorite. And if there's no value, then it's going to be, it's going to be false. Otherwise it's going to be true if it does fall to the side of the branch. So this determines the mark as favorite. So this is the part where I do additional verification here, whether the job requirement for the job posting is within my skill set, right? So this is additional verification here. The reason for this is I don't want to write any cover letter and waste AI credits if it's something that I'm not really going to be applying for anyway. So I'm not going to be wasting resources for that. I'm going to be using AI, ironically, to do some checking and make sure that against my skill set and the job description, we want to make sure there's a match there, right? So I'm putting 60% match. The same prompt that I used last time. It's here as a hiring manager, et cetera, et cetera. And then this is going to return a true or false. Whatever it falls on the branch is whether it's going to be writing a cover letter or not. If it does, then it's going to write a cover letter and it's going to be saving it to Google Docs, which is going to do it here. And it's going to add the Google Docs URL here, which includes the document ID of that Google Docs that was created. Otherwise, it's still going to create a table record, but it's not going to have the cover letter URL as part of it. So that's the only difference where it falls to. So yeah, other than that, and then it's going to wherever it falls and it's going to go back down here, regardless of the outcome and whether it fits within our salary requirement or not, or whether it fits our job skills. It's going to be pulling this information from the storage, the mark as favorite by using this key. And then if it's not set, which if it goes on the false side of the branch, then it's going to be false by default. Otherwise, it's going to be true. We're sending a return response back and we have to make sure that we're sending back a valid JSON object here. So you notice here the mark favorite is the same property that we're using in zero work. And then we're setting the property here inside the double quotes here, which is pointing to this mark as favorite storage, whatever the value is stored for that storage key. All right. And then we're sending that, and this is the body that we're sending back and then mark favorite as a true or false, right? Then it goes back to zero work. Then zero work accepts that response back, which save to this column mark favorite matching the output, right? And then it's going to be saving into this column right here, which is the mark favorite. 
So it's true or false right here. After that, we can check whether the mark favorite uh, property that came back from active basis is true or false. We added this uh, start condition here. Let's go ahead and collapse that. And then whether it's true or not. So the start condition and the condition here, uh, we're doing a comparison here. The value that we got is true. And if it's true, then we're going to go ahead and check whether the element for the bookmark exists. So this one right here to save a button container with a button area dash label of save this job. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the jobs here. You see here, there's this icon right here where you can bookmark. So we can do a control F here. So right here, you can see that it found one element, but if we click on this bookmark, so you can do a control F here. You see here that it's not finding anything because this job posting was already a bookmark and therefore that element doesn't exist anymore on this page. So it's being uh, dynamically swapped out and removed from this page. All right, so if we go ahead and uncheck this one and do a control find again, then it's it found again, right? So since it exists. So that's the reason why we're checking whether that check web element or whether that element exists. It's, it determines whether we want to click on that bookmark or not. So if we previously have bookmarked that job posting already, there's really no reason to, to be clicking on that element anyways. And that's why we're checking it. So if it does found, it goes to this uh, side of the, the branch here and then it's saving as favorite, which is essentially clicking the same target as selector here, save element, which is the button. And that pretty much terminates the whole automation right here. So that's the whole automation from start to finish. So yeah, that's the end of this video. So if there's any type of content that you want me to do a tutorial on in the future, please go ahead and leave it on the comment. I review each and every single one of your comments and I'll take it in consideration. As always, if you like this type of content, please go ahead and consider subscribing to my channel and like this video. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.